All right, Coach. Um, again, I'll just kind of introduce you here. Uh, folks, uh, really fortunate here tonight to have the head coach of the University of South Dakota State, uh, Coach John Stiglmeyer, join us. Um, coach, I'm going to kind of give you the floor and let you kind of go from here. You said I have unlimited time. Is that what you said, Brian? Hey, coach, I'll, I'll listen to you all night. So you take as long <laughs> as you like. Well, I wish I could see the faces if there were some on to see if they're awake or not. But uh, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate the the the, the vision of this uh, foundation and clinic. So it's an honor to be part of it. Um, I've I've shared some of this stuff in other clinics. Uh, I've had tweaked it some. So hopefully, if you've heard me talk before about building a program or building our program, uh, there's some new nuggets uh, in here. Uh, sometimes I'll talk about being uh, a head coach. Uh, I'll refer to being going from an assistant to a head coach and some of it's geared to being just, uh, not just, but an assistant coach. Uh, I love clinics. I've, I've lived in clinics at, at a younger age. I would, uh, I would say that in, in my opinion, uh, the next step of learning football is to go visit, uh, go on a professional visit. And I, I think there's uh, assistant coaches sometimes in high school that, 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 that just, that, doesn't fit with them and I encourage you to do it to be able to go sit down with a college staff go sit down with another high school staff uh, share ideas uh, I, I really believe that's the way you grow I, I think a lot of seeds are planted in, in clinics but a professional visit is is uh, is really good it can be as simple as what I did I went from being the defensive back coach to the linebackers coach and then midway through my career and I called up a guy named Kevin Steele at Nebraska a well-known coach, and I said, I want to come down, and I don't scheme. I, I want to talk about how to coach the linebackers, and I'd never done it. I'd done defensive backs my whole career, and he spent a day with me, and and and, and I'm, I'm a slow learner, but it took a day, and I learned it. So, um, in fact, I'll make the offer. Uh, I really, I think that's part of our our mission, really, as a university, and, and that's to to be available to high school coaches or other college coaches, because we do the same. And so uh, during spring ball, we have a couple of days set aside, uh, April 1st and April 8th, that we'd encourage anybody to come visit or come watch spring ball uh, with us. Just contact me or, or anybody our staff, and we'd love to have you. A little bit of a background about me. Uh, uh, did not play college football, so I'm a, they would call me a walk-on head football coach. Uh, I was a student coach in college. I was blessed to be a bunch of, uh, around a bunch of great, uh, great uh, coaches and mentors through my career. I played nine man uh, high school football as a GA. I was a high school assistant for three years. And then I got into college. I was an NAI coach for three years at Northern State. I went back, was a GA at Wisconsin. Uh, came here 34 years ago. And when I say I'm blessed, uh, that's a great reference for a coach. Three years as DB coach, six years as a linebacker coach, D coordinator, and then the last 25 years as a head coach. Uh, we've been, we've been, I've been blessed to be under nine head football coaches. Uh, I've learned something from each one of them. And uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, my, my DNA, my coaching DNA is a mixture of, of those guys. And then what's natural for me. Um, we've had some success at South Dakota State. We've been in the playoffs one time as a division two school, not in my era. But we've been to the playoffs 11 out of the last 14 years, 10 straight in the FCS level. And uh, we also do a pretty good job in the classroom. Our guys uh, uh, are always, always above a three-point as a, as, a, as a class, as a group. Now, we all know that you build a football program. There's, there's, there's no sport that defines team better than football. And, and it doesn't happen overnight. For some, it does. But most programs are built with time and energy and numbers and, uh, and just a lot of hard work. And so uh, the things I referenced tonight, uh, I'm gonna talk about how the SDSU football program has been built. And uh, uh, I know most clinics, you love the X's and O's. I love the X's and O's, but I really believe uh, the fundamentals of, of, of building a program are a prerequisite to whatever X's and O's you use. I mean, that, that gives you the foundation uh, to be, uh, be a great program. Um, I do believe, I, I, I buy into the fact that 
that any good program is going to have a number of things that are consistent. All programs, all good programs will have discipline. All good programs will have great work ethic. All good programs will have a belief. You know, you don't have guys walking around in the program, and this is one of my hot, hot buttons. You won't have guys walking around in the program wondering if things are going to work. They buy in. They believe. All good programs will have, have sound schemes. Uh, Georgia won the, the FBS championship. Uh, Mary Harden Baylor won the Division Three uh, championship. They all have those things. Any high school program uh, that wins a championship and the ones that don't uh, have those things. Uh, but where do you go from there? Well, what, what else is part of building a program? And I, I really believe, uh, I really believe that as a head coach and even as a position coach within your position, you put your twist, you put your handprint, you put your, 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 you breathe on uh, the program, if you will. And uh, that's probably what you're going to hear from me today. Not about discipline and not about being sound, but really about what makes us who we are. And, and, and so it's food for thought, really. Because again, everybody's different. Everybody will approach it differently. I do think whether you're an assistant or whether you're a head coach, that uh, there's an evolution process. Uh, I don't think you're the same the first year as you are the third year. And, uh, and if you are, then I think uh, most, most people would say you're not growing. You're not, uh, you're not uh, uh, doing what you need to do. And so uh, some of these things that I bring up weren't th th this way the first year, 25 years ago when I became head coach. I've evolved. I've changed. And, and uh, but right now for the last, I'm guessing 12, 15 years, uh, what I talk about has been consistent and has been SDSU football. I'll give you an example. We lost two guys to being head coaches this year. Um, Jason Eck went to be the head coach at Idaho. Brian Bergstrom is going to be the head coach at Winona State. He is the head coach at Winona State. Distinctly different personalities. They're going to have discipline. They're going to be sound, all those things. But I guarantee you, their programs will be distinctly different, even they, though they coached them in, for a long time in this program. And so that's just, just how it works, uh, really getting to know you. And then in a comfort zone for, for, for you and I, uh, whoever listens to this, whoever's listening to it, uh, I, I, I know I'm Joe Average. John Stigelmeyer, Coach Stig is Joe Average. I, I, I don't have any real gifts uh, my dad taught me a couple things on the farm, and, and that's how I approach life. Be a good person and work hard. But I tell you what, the normal curve, the bell-shaped curve says 68% of us are Joe Average. And so maybe some of the stuff that this Joe Average talks about, you can relate to and uh, strikes, a chord, strikes a chord with you. Um, I'm convinced, down there at the bottom of that first slide, I'm convinced that wherever you're a head coach, uh, the two top priorities, the two top uh, duties you have to do or responsibilities are the vision for the program and the temperature or the climate for the program. And I'll talk about each uh, one in length and one briefly. The vision, the vision of the program. Okay, what does that mean? Where are we going and how are we going to get there? And your ability as a head coach to sell that and stick to it and to evaluate it and and to push it and get everybody to believe in it. We talk at South Dakota State about being a, a voice of one, right? That you should be able to ask myself or any of our assistants any question about our vision or our program, and we all have the same answer. That takes a lot of work, and that takes guys that believe in what's going on. You should be, we talk about being one heartbeat, meaning we're, we're, all, we're, we're one uh, unit as a coaching staff, and I think that's really important. And I would pause here and, and just, uh, I'm not going to pause, but uh, at some point in the night or tomorrow, whatever, uh, as a head coach, um, uh, do the guys believe in your program? Because you can't have a vision without belief. All right. Assistant coaches, do you believe in your head coach's uh, uh, leadership and his vision? And uh, I know what, what human nature is and I know, uh, what what uh, writings say, but I'm going to be totally different from that. Uh, I should not have to earn the belief of my assistants, nor should my AD have to earn the belief and trust uh, from me or the president from the AD and myself. That's a decision you make. 
And uh, most people are not wired that way. In fact, 99.9% wait for something to prove itself to believe in. They wait for the weight program to, to, to work or the PAC plan, the system to work. And all we do is hold each other back. That's all we do. And if you're an educator, you know the power of belief and looking at a, a student and believing they're going to be great rather than have them, holding them back by wondering or, or looking at them like they're an underachiever. Uh, our perception, our belief uh, makes a whole, a huge difference. And so uh, I ask everybody in our program, Two-Way Street, believe in everything. Believe in the players, believe in all the systems. Let's move ahead. Uh, may I get the uh, temperature or climate? What does that mean? Uh, that means how do the people feel in your program? And, and I know they talk about the janitors and the secretaries, and I agree with that. But let's talk about the, 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 the people that are, that you depend on. How do the people feel in your program? Okay, and I, I picture it as being having a, a, a spectrum. You know, there's there's a, there's this varied way of people how people are treated and expectations. And I picture at one end of the spectrum the term love. People feel loved, and and you might flinch a little bit as a football coach, but there's no more powerful word I can use uh, to 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 say something to somebody to tell them how I feel about it. I don't care if it's a freshman linebacker or my wife. Uh, I can say love to both. And at the other, other, other end of the spectrum is a statement like this. Uh, they feel like they're being interviewed every day. The players feel like they have to earn their spot every day. And I agree with competition, and I agree with all that stuff, all right? Uh, but uh, I, I, I totally believe that the more people are loved, the, the, the more comfortable they feel in your program, uh, the better they're going to perform. And let's go on record. If you, if you have the best athletes, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. If it doesn't probably not matter what we do, right? But there's only one team has the best athletes. And I bet if you would survey all championships, many times the team with the best athletes doesn't win the championship. It's the team that's the best football. Team. And so uh, what is the temperature of, of, of your program? I believe uh, love is a great motivator. Uh, I believe, I know that love is an intrinsic motivation, meaning it's in my heart, it's in my body, it's in my soul. And, and putting pressure on somebody is an extrinsic. An extrinsic doesn't last. You have to do it over and over and over. You have to, you have to push that kid over and over and over rather than teach him that you love him and that you expect him and you believe in him and, and, and he will do great things. And uh, I, I believe in that. If you want a great model, a model, excuse me, if you want a great model, for, for love and, and intrinsic motivation and, and coaching like this, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes have what's called three-dimensional coaching. And it is phenomenal at looking at the different areas, pillars, uh, a pyramid type of deal uh, of how becoming a, a coach that loves his players and, and coaches them in all three dimensions. So, so how do we create a program of family and love? How do we do that? Well, first of all, it's really hard in college. You know, our guys don't grow up together. We get 25 new guys, 25 new guys on the average every year. They have no relationships when they get here and they don't know the football team other than maybe on an official visit, they met some guys for, for an hour or something. And so we have to work hard uh, to create family, to get to the point uh, where we can say we, we love each other. Uh, uh, I know our players' birthdays, all right? I gave uh, three guys, I was behind a little bit today, but I gave three guys birthdays uh, candy bars in their in their uh position meetings you laugh you go a big deal well if i say everybody says we're a family everybody wants to 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 to, to be able to say hey i love you and it means something well, what does a family do it celebrates birthdays it knows more about the player than their height weight and, and 40 time i talked to a young man a, a transfer guy yesterday in my office uh his dad said if he'd have walked by the head coach in the program he was in the head coach wouldn't have known his name uh, that, that I, I feel sorry for the young men in that program. Really, uh, what what a, what a tough situation. Uh, I know our coaches' anniversaries. I try to I try to honor that. Uh, we treat everybody as an individual. This is totally against the book. We treat everybody as an individual. In other words, I don't hide behind a policy or a theory that says you have to be at everything all the time. All right. I believe that if uh, I don't try to work out things that are important to their, our young men, be it class 
or be at a, a, a brother's wedding or whatever, that young man's going to work harder for me for the rest of his days. And, uh, and so a young man knows he can come into my office. I've got about, about a bunch of uh, get out of jail card free cards from Monopoly and they, they, they can ask me. They can ask me, is it a way to get to do this? And we will work it out. Our coaches do it all the time. Uh, we had a coach that went to his daughter's state wrestling tournament last week. We worked it out. We met around it. And he was able to experience it with his family. He said, it's, uh, it, what, what, you know, think about it, college coaches. Does that happen in your program? What are you missing that you, you could work out? And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying we're better. Uh, I'm going to say we're different. Uh, I let a young man miss two days last week because his, his, his mom was struggling. His mom was really struggling and his, his brothers and sisters. And uh, it's hard for me to say we're a family. I love you if I don't let let young men try to get there. And I, I know this young man will work harder than, uh, than he's worked because of it. Uh, so I, so how do you motivate a guy? How does a guy feel good? How does he feel comfortable in your, your, uh, in your program? It's when you love him, when you take care of him, when you, when you recognize his needs. Um, we have a, we have a Monday night non-football meeting, right? Listen to this. We get 20 hours with our players. Most coaches can't talk about anything but football. We have, we have a designated half an hour to 45 minutes in our program on Monday nights during the season, right? Right, right after we put in the initial install where we sit down with our players and you can't talk about football. It's a non-football meeting. Why in the heck would we do that? Well, how do you get to know each other if you, if you don't talk about something other than football? So our coaches have topics, players bring up topics, and it's one of the most meaningful things we do. It's designated. It's, it's designed to to grow it's like your kitchen table your family's kitchen table where you're not just talking about a play or a defense or or, or an interception you're you're beyond that and, and i love that i love that about our coaches and our our program uh we involve our our, our families uh, we take and this is fcs division one football right we take our sons and daughters on an away trip and, and uh, so they'll, they'll get on the plane this year. They went to Youngstown with us. They'll get on the plane. They'll get on the bus. It'll be an overnight. And, and uh, yes, it's a business trip, but it's also a, a picture of what it means to be a dad in front of our players. Some of them didn't have that picture. And some of them need to have a model then to, to see how it works. So they have this, 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 and they're allowed to be at practice, and they're allowed to be in, uh, around the office and so on. And uh, I, I see it as a sign of weakness when you don't allow that to happen. Uh, you're, you're, you're worried that guys are gonna, guys are gonna do things wrong because they view that as wrong. I, I view that as totally right. Uh, we take our wives on a road trip, overnight trip, and our guys, our players, student athletes get to see our, our coaches being husbands. And again, uh, the way our world needs, we need to be fathers, we need to be husbands, we need to be examples to these young men that we're entrusted with uh, for five short years. Uh, we used to go on a retreat to Rapid City, six hours away, jump in the bus, go out there, stay in the, in the uh, National Guard barracks. We used to do a clinic. We used to do a, a, a camp. We, we do service projects. We visit Mount Rushmore. What are we doing? We're growing together relationally. Nobody wanted to jump on that bus for six hours. <laughs> but after they came home. They felt better about themselves. They felt better about their teammates. And it was a special memory. Talk about a goofy deal. A bunch of 18 to 23 year old guys running to see Mount Rushmore as if they've never been out of their state. So it's really cool, really cool experience. What else? What else about Tampa? Well, how do we coach? How do we coach on the field? You know, I've been to some some practices, and 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 again, uh, I'm talking about my twist, my personality, my handprint in our program, and how it's been built and what it's about. Uh, everybody's going to be different, but I've been to some some practices, college practices that you you'd have thought the F word was part of a football technique. You'd thought that profanity was was uh, uh, in a football manual. Uh, uh, it was used so much, and I just I just uh, don't see that uh, creating a good climate. I, I really don't. I see it as a sign of weakness. And our players know if they use the F word in the football field, uh, I kick them off the field for five or six plays. Uh, get control of yourself. Uh, it, it's not legal to punch the guy. It's not legal to lose your temper and use the wrong terminology. We say this as coaches, 
Try to say four positives for every negative you say. Try to layer it, sandwich it. Positive, a correction, a positive. Uh, and it might be just, I love you, man. I love you. Keep going hard. When, 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 when he didn't go hard, you know, uh, we praise loud, criticize quietly. This is another thing I see over and over that for me, uh, it does not make sense. Uh, if you want to correct a young man on the football field and he's surrounded up by his peers, why would you go off on him? Why would you try to teach him something by embarrassing him? Why wouldn't you praise loudly? When something's right, do that. When something's wrong, take them aside and ask them, first of all, what's going on? You're having a tough practice. Is there something else going on? And then make the correction and make sure he hears you and make sure he knows he loves you and you care about him and you're not going to skin him alive. I've seen a young man at a professional visit skinned alive uh, uh, symbolically in front of his teammates. And I don't know the background story. I don't know that. But I, I, was, I, I hurt for the young man. I, I did. And I don't see any place for that at any level uh, of football. Uh, if you do rip a guy, repair him. If you do rip a guy, go in the locker room afterwards and, and sit down with him and clear it up. And uh, we've had days where I've told coaches, you only say positive things. If there's, if there's something negative that should be said, you just wait until film or, or don't, don't ever say it. Only positive uh, things. Uh, and, you know, I don't have a position group. So I, I, my position group is our assistants. And, and, they are an extension of me, and these are things that I expect from them in terms of the temperature, the temperature of our program. So that's uh, two of the most important things. Um, next, we have a picture of some of the some some of our, our coaching manuals. All right, now I've seen coaching manuals that are uh, you know a, a, a notebook deep, an inch deep, and and there's a lot of stuff in there, and there's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, our our coaching manuals on one sheet of paper one sheet of paper. And this is about, I would say two thirds of it because of the slide and the work steady girl that did it and all that stuff. But I'm gonna go through some of this stuff and, 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 and uh, explain again, how our program works and how it's been built and so on. Uh, up at the upper left-hand corner, top left-hand corner. When we went to division one, we used a, a, an organization called Car Associates. And, and they mentored us. First of all, they did a study and said, you can go. And after they said, you can go, then they met with us, I think, every third uh, week and, and, and gave us insight in the process and what was called the reclassification. It was a four-year deal. We had to go four years. They spent, I think, two years with us. Very intelligent guys. Uh, Bill Carr and, and Gerald Odell are the guys we dealt with. It's irrelevant what their names were. But I, I, I cornered those guys at one point and I said, when you recommend a head coach, because they do head coaching searches too, when you recommend a head, co a head coach, what are the two most important characteristics for you to feel good about that, that, that individual? And they said those two things up at the top. Good judgment, which is using all the facts, and making the correct decision. Okay, duh. But evidently some guys don't have that. So this becomes really important than intellectual curiosity. We call it daydreaming, all right? Intellectual curiosity, the desire and effort to continue to try to grow and improve. What does that mean? Constantly looking at your program and saying, where can we tweak it? What's a better way to do it? Uh, what's a better way to, to, to run practice? Uh, on and on and on. And I literally tell our guys to daydream a half an hour a day and just think about their job and think about our program and come to me with ideas that we have a de democratic uh, uh, situation as coaches and I get to make the last decision, but I want ideas. I'm better because of those guys daydream. Job description, right? Uh, be proactive, just do it, right? And, and I've got a, a, you'll see a delegation of, of duties. I don't want to tell a guy to, to go round up the summer jobs for the guys. I, I don't want to tell a guy to uh, work on this, that, or the other thing. That It's your job. You know the schedule. Do it. But the thing that, that, that I'm adamant about is when you come to a staff meeting, have a notebook and participate. Put your phone away and have a notebook and participate. And I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at the number of uh, high individuals at a university or wherever you go to a clinic and, and people are on their phone the whole time when they're at a pre presentation. Uh, Maybe old fashioned, but uh, put your phone away. Uh, just the, the recruiting area there on the left side, 
uh, and, and you could apply this, I think, in a lot of ways in your program, but as we try to get to know recruits, we ask them 18 tough questions. They're really not tough questions, but they're defining questions. They're questions that tell us who this guy is beyond his film and beyond his transcript. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll go to the, the secretary, but that's more of a, that's more of a, a, a clinic talk. I'm going to ask these guys these questions to try to figure out who they really are. Do they really belong above, above the line for us? Work hours, be efficient. Football's a science, all right? Uh, we, I ask our sides of the ball to have an answer book. I want you to hear me on this, and I'm sure everybody does, but this, again, is one of my uh, hot buttons. Uh, if I'm on offense, I have an answer book on how to attack cover three. I have an answer book on how to attack two man. I have an answer book on uh, how to attack a, a team that blitzes strong side all the time and what are the best deals. And, and it literally should be a notebook. It literally should be, it should be in our heads, but it shouldn't be a, a situation where you potentially have to wait until the game's over to understand that you did not attack. You did not give your players uh, a chance uh, to, uh, uh, to have success. And why do I bring that up is, is, is football's uh, being efficient. That's a science. If you look at a, a team's defense, say, you should have built-in answers automatically. You shouldn't be designing new plays or new defenses. Uh, again, uh, we'll talk about mastery later on, but it makes it virtually impossible to master stuff. Uh, coaches are in control of the heartbeat of the program. Uh, it comes from you, uh, from the assistants. And I know head coaches get a lot of credit, but – uh, we all have assistance and we all depend on assistance. And uh, I, I really think there's never been a, a coach that's the coach of the year. I think it's a staff that's the coaches of the year. Uh, being on the same page, uh, we control that, everybody being on the same page. Uh, you see down there in the middle that, that, that the players' academics are the coaches' uh, grades, right? In other words, at the end of uh, the year, I will, I will average out the offensive line, defensive line, cornerbacks, and, and, and list the GPAs in our MAD manual. You'll see that down the road here. In our MAD manual, uh, uh, from the, the best GPAs to lowest GPAs. And our coaches know when I put that in there, whoever's at the top, that's not only the player's GPA, that's the coach's GPA. And can you do that in high school? I don't see why not. I don't see why we're not, we wouldn't push to have our guys do excellent in the classroom, keep track, ask them to come in and give us their grades, on and on and on. I coached in high school, and I tried to coach the, 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 the entire person. Personnel, up the right hand corner, I talked about some of this stuff. No profanity, full positives for one negative, rip and repair. Take time to think, all right? That, that, that third statement down there should be T to the fourth power behind it. My work study girl couldn't, couldn't get that done. To be T to the fourth power. I'm a math, I have a math degree, so I use a lot of math examples. Take time to think, right? Take time to ponder. When I go to a staff meeting and I've got some ideas on ideas on paper, and I'm going to be responsible for 10 guys asking questions, I should have thought these things through. And so many guys, especially as coaches, think they need to be, they're smarter because they answer things quicker. Uh, answer the right way. Answer the right stuff. Uh, and, and, and you do that by taking time to think. In the middle there, preparation. One of my hot buttons, one of the parts of the Jack way is uh, leave nothing to chance, all right? I write everything down. I have a, I have a, um, a, note, a piece of note paper and, and a pen in my pocket all the time. And, uh, I, I, and I'm not forgetful. I just want to leave nothing to chance. I, 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 uh, when I make a commitment, when I think of something, I want to I wanna make sure I complete it. Uh, drill sheet. I make all our coaches give me a drill sheet at the start of fall camp. And most of the time I look at it and say, can you narrow that down? And I'll just say that because I'm going to say it. Uh, can you narrow that down? We, we have guys that have, have so many drills. They have, to, they have to run different drills every week to get their drill sheet. How can a young man master the drills? There should be enough drills that covers all the basics of your position that uh, they can master them the first time they go through. And you can repeat them and get better and better and better. Uh, and so narrow them down. There's a, Eric Schroeder postulate. I'll talk about postulate here in a little while. Uh, reminders. You know, as a college coach, I want our guys to give our guys reminders on Tuesday. 
I don't want them to give them to them on Friday. Why would you give them reminders that they should have been using to watch film at, at the end of the week? It doesn't make any sense to me. So really, you give them notes. You give them notes on how you're tweaking the defense, a new play you're putting in, whatever, on Tuesday. And then you, you, you improve on it on Wednesday. You change some stuff. You eliminate some stuff. You add some stuff. And they have this constant uh, uh, progression of what's going on in the program so that they get to in the week and they get the final copy they, they already know what's on there because they've used it during the during the during the during the week and then always cut video uh why waste time on a film there's nothing to teach off of uh we have limited time most people don't get through all their videos so always cut your video uh video down there at the bottom not the not the quote but the keep track of mental errors i think this is really important guys i really do thursdays which is a walkthrough day for us and Fridays, which is a 55-minute up-tempo practice, uh, and only 40 of that's team. I want the guys not waiting for film. I want them keeping track of mental errors on, on the field. That tells me two things. Number one, the coach is paying attention. Number two, they can correct the mental error. And number three, uh, the kid knows you better be sharp uh, on Thursdays and Fridays. The things, the stuff should be mastered. And why, do I, why is that such a big deal for me? Because how many games are lost because of a mental error, not a physical error, that we didn't catch during the week? And uh, it happens at all levels. You see it at all levels. So on Friday, after practice, on a way to away game, after the, uh, uh, the, the day, each coach is going to – I'm going to go over a set, set number of questions with them. And I don't have time to go through those, but I'm going to ask of mental errors. How many mental errors do the corners have? He says five. I'm going to say bad day, bad week. And then I want to know why. If they swan, they, they should do this. It's two and they've been correct. That's how it should work. And so uh, uh, that's our coach's man. All right. Um, so I'm going to deviate for a second here and, and, and really go off the wall with something and, and, uh, and go into something that I think is really important. That you probably do, but you probably do it a different way. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, we evolve as coaches we learn things as coaches we do that as as people also as we go through life we we have lessons and they i think most people call them life lessons and and they're a bigger lesson than some i mean they they mark us and they they permanently mark us and and, and to the extent that i don't ever want to do that again or i always want to do it this way those would that would be a life lesson and the same thing happens in a football program or at least in our pro football program the same thing has happened to me, as I've gone through this this process of of being an assistant head football coach, I've kept track of things that that I think are more important than some others. All right, I think they're 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 they they got to be on our mind at all times. They got to be an integral part of our program, and this is what they are. They're postulates. For those of you that suffered through geometry class, you know what a postulate. You used to know what a postulate is. A postulate is a, is a statement that can't be argued. It's true, right? Two points define a line. That's one of the postulates, maybe the first one. Nobody argues that, right? So nobody argues our postulates. These are things, experiences I've had that I want either the lesson to, to be with permanently with our program. I, I, I don't want the, the air made ever again. Uh, I don't want this way of doing things done ever again and so i name them a postulate so i go over these every year with our coaches because there's a lesson in each one of them and i'm not going to go over all of them but uh maybe a few and a few that would would relate no boucher postulate no boucher was our starting quarterback my first year as a head coach he was a really good player he had sh shoulder surgery after the season went through winter workouts went through uh spring ball couldn't do anything came into my office with a senior uh, with his junior year interview. And I said, so what are your plans next year? And he said, I'm going to graduate. I said, whoa, 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 you're, you're my starting quarterback. You're going to graduate. And he said, yeah, um, I got enough credits. So I was going to work on my master's, but I'm going to just graduate. I said, why is that? He said, Coach Stig, and he was very respectful, very respectful. Mo Boucher is the salt of the earth. He said, Coach Stig, you, you talk about family, and not, not once did you or one of your assistants, one of our assistants, ask me how I was doing that whole time I was at every practice. And he said, I just, it just, I just didn't feel like it belonged anymore. So what does the no Boucher postulate mean? It means when you have an injured player, he needs you more than your healthy players do. 
you need to check in with those guys periodically and not forget them. Now, who are we trying to get ready, right? We're trying to get ready to the healthy guys and so on. But, but who needs us? Who's the guy that's hurting because he can't be out there? Uh, and so here's what, how it works in, in our program. The trainer comes in, he goes over the, the, the injury report, and he'll say, uh, so-and-so's out for three weeks, so-and-so's out for, for the season, so whatever. And I, I just say this, no Boucher postulate. Not trying to be funny, not trying to be speak down to people. They, they know what I mean. Jimmy Rogers postulate is, Jimmy Rogers is our linebacker coach. He was a two-time all-conference player for us, a phenomenal football player, did not have the physical measurements to be on the field. Yet nobody could keep him off the field. And so when guys come around and they, they talk about a whole, even in high school, how a guy can dunk the ball or how a guy runs the 200 meters or how far he throws his shot put, I say Jimmy Rogers postulate, which means what? You win football games with football players. I'm fine with all those other measures. I'm fine. I get excited about them. But they better be passionate about the grind of, of, of football. Doug Wentz postulate says, believe in your players. Long story, believe in your players. San Antonio postulate. We go over something in the staff room. It's been heated discussion. I said, this is what we're going to do. San Antonio postulate. We're done. Meaning we're all getting on the bus. We're going to San Antonio. And you know what? Don't go down half the road, down, half, halfway down the road and say, you know what? I, th I think we should have talked about this. Get your talking out of the way. We'll get on the bus. We'll get going. Um, Rob Sarvis, postulate for you assistance. You better be on your head coach's page. You better speak and, and represent what he represents because you want to have a cancer. You want to have something that dissolves a program, have assistants that are saying something uh, different than the head coach. Mike Barber postulate is, uh, and, and Bo Pelini, uh, uh, Belichick, those are all good postulates, but they, they, they're more philosophical. Uh, Mike Barber postulate, the summers for getting better as a football player. Mike Barber was a walk-on linebacker from Sioux City, a great young man, great player, great, great dedication. And his deal was uh, it, it, the summer's not for making the most money. It's for having a job to survive, not wear your body out to become a better football player. And uh, Eric Schroeder postulate is, uh, I believe Eric Schroeder hit the sled for five years in a row and believe he got better every time he hit it. And what does that mean? It means the grind of football practice, embrace it. Embrace it and believe you're going to get better at those mundane drills that you do. Uh, the Proverbs postulate, those are four Proverbs that uh, talk about the evils of gossip. How many coaching staff have three, four guys sit around and talk about what's wrong or what's right or bash a player? And, and, and Proverbs, pretty wise, the guy that wrote Proverbs is pretty wise. He, he talks about the, 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 the uh, negatives of that. Pine... Arkansas Pine Bluff postulate. I never thought we'd beat a team 90 to 6. I never imagined that. That'll never happen again in our program. And the elliptical postulate is it came from the pandemic. If you if you ever worked on an elliptical, an elliptical exerciser, and you take your pulse after you've gone for a while, I've got this system that I use. I take my pulse, I write it down. I know when I take my pulse at a time where I haven't worked hard enough, my, that my heart rate's can, heart rate's gonna be lower. I know when I slack. We all do. That's what the elliptical postulate says. It says, you know, when you walk out of the meeting, when you walk out of the, the office, we walk off the practice field. Did I give it my all as a coach or did I slack off? Because the elliptical postulate, the elliptical machine will tell me, it'll tell me objectively uh, that I failed. Uh, some other things we do in our program. I, I require our coaches to have a pen or a pencil in their, po their pocket at practice. Uh, a lot of P words there. Um, why? Because uh, I, I don't want to miss a beat. I think to, to think that you're going to remember that you wanted to watch the left guard on play seven of the team is, is not a good situation, leaving something to chance. Uh, we have a summer shirt we give our guys. It's, it's, it's compounding interest uh, uh, equation. Our guys are better in math because I'm a math uh, uh, guy, but it, it, this year's is going to say this, 1.005 to the X power. X is a day. Every day you put a day in there, you increase, you improve yourself a half a percent this year. The first year was 1.001 to the X power. And all I'm telling, I'll tell them, I want to give them a new shirt. I want, to, I want to remind them that every day they work hard, every day they work hard, it compounds. That's how strength gets better. That's how condition gets better. That's how giving speeches gets better. Uh, 
um, uh, all those things. And so uh, it's just a reminder, a unique way of saying, and in fact, I asked them, what does that mean? And, and most of them laugh at me because they don't want to answer the question. But it's just a reminder that every day, even the days when they're not working out, but they don't, don't do something negative to their body, I say, you get to put another number in there. You know what? If you, if it, this, is, this is cool. This is a good, good example. 1.005 to the 70 power to the 70. And that's 70 days in the summer. That comes out to be 41.7% improvement. Unheard of. Would be impossible. Would be impossible. But they know because that number is so big that, that every day adds to something. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a cool deal in our program. We put last play on our helmets, the term last play on our helmets and uh, uh, on, our, on our travel gear. What does that mean? If you were practicing today, if you were playing today, if this was the game where, where the, the good Lord said, you don't get to play another play, whatever happens, it's your senior year and it's last play, it's a, a career ending injury. How do you want to be remembered? When you watch that last play, if football is really important to you, which it is, uh, how do you want to be remembered? And, and, and that's what last play means. Play every play like it's the last play. We start practice. I say, shake it up. An offensive guy goes to a defensive guy and they shake hands and they say last play to each other. And then at the end of the practice, we say, shake it up. And they, con they confirm that they, they did that for summer all of practice. It's a high calling, man. It is a high charge, but why not? Why not? Only one team wins a national championship, state championship, uh, district championship. Uh, uh, we haven't won one yet, so we're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep pushing. Um, we have, a, I, I, in fact, I have a whole clinic talk where I talk about S squared, S to the number two power. What is that? Special situations. What are special situations in football? Uh, do you kick the PAT or go for two? We have a card that goes through all the di differentials. The card makes the decision for us. We've done the math. We've done the philosophy stuff. Uh, and by the way, if, if, if you want any of this stuff, uh, email me. My email's in the, in the, on our website, and I'll send you the Mad Manual that I'm going to talk about here in a little while or any of these, these special situation things. You know, how, how do you know when you can take a knee and kill the clock when there's 45 seconds left and there's, there's two time, your opponent has two timeouts? We've done the math. It's on a card. Uh, we know you're going you're gonna to count this many seconds because of the clock. You're going you're to take two seconds, one, two, and take a knee. Uh, and then we've got another card that says victory rollout. That's victory, take a knee. Victory rollout that, that, uh, that we burn some more, uh, burn some more uh, seconds. And we know objectively when we can do that. Uh, there are 61 special situations that we practice in special teams, offense, and defense. Most of them are special teams and and offense, 61. Now, when you dig into this, these are things that happen once every three years, some of them. These are situations that might happen uh, one time in your coaching career. Your players deserve to be prepared. Your players deserve, in fact, our players love S squared, period, where we review all these things. I'll give you a great example. We have, we have a special situation called uh, uh, victory law. Let me get that note. Uh, game win lob, excuse me, game win lob. So we're kicking off. There's, there's 14, 13, 12 seconds left in the, in the game or in half. Uh, their best strategy is return the ball, maybe kick a field goal, but get some yards on it. And what do most people do in this situation? They squib it. When they squib it, you, they get the ball much quicker than when you kick it deep or lob it. And they, they, they get a chance to, to, to get it up the field. We call game-win lob. So our kicker's been trained to kick a lob that lands is about on the 30. It's got a hang time of over three seconds. And they, there's no returning. There's no razzle-dazzle. There's nothing. We're standing by the guy or closing in on the guy when he's catching the lob. So there is no play. There is no decision for the, guy, the guys to do. We beat uh, Stephen F. Austin. They were ahead of us. They, they kicked the squib. Our, 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 one of our up front, uh, our wedge guys picked it up, ran it back to the 45. Three plays later, we scored with no seconds left. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying I like game, game win lob uh, better. Um, we use the term mastery, right? Uh, uh, forgive me for my example here, but I think this is powerful, all right? Uh, when, you learned, when you learned how to multiply, uh, you use flashcards unless some of you young guys had a different system, but you used flashcards. Your mom held up these cards when you were learning math and you learned what 
two times four was. And, and first of all, if you remember, you learned what four plus four was. You'd learn how to add. And then you learned that two times four is two four. So you related that. And then all of a sudden you just mastered these things. And now you don't have to think about it anymore. There's no thinking when you see uh, five times three, it's instant. It's mastered. That's the way football has to be taught. That's the way a defense and an offensive play has to be in a young man's mind. It has to be mastered. There can't be any thinking. All right. So somehow you have to teach it. Somehow you have to teach it. And I make our guys have lesson plans. I forgot to mention that. Our guys have lesson plans on the board so they don't miss anything. The worst thing I hear in the football field is, Coach, we didn't cover this. And uh, I, I, that doesn't excite me. I don't, and so if, he, if, if you have it on the board, you're going to cover it. And so most football, college football coaches are not trained in education. They're not trained as teachers. They are good players. And, uh, and, and they have to be good teachers. Uh, that's the, one, of my, uh, one of my hot points. So back to, back to mastery. Um, I've got to, when I say, I've got to teach the secondary. Let's use the secondary. When I say four zone, that they know their alignment, they know their keys, right? They, they uh, know uh, their run fit, their pass responsibility. They know the three by one adjustment, the unbalanced adjustment, the no back adjustment. They, that's all got to be mastered. There can't be any thinking about it. And so I've been in programs, been around coaches that put in a coverage one day and put in a coverage the next day, put in coverage the next day. And, and, and nobody is going full speed because they don't have anything mastered. And, and then they line up and unbalanced and the whole practice goes to, to heck because we, we, we don't know what to do. And, uh, and so uh, to, to master it means there's no thought press process left in, in that. And, and, and so uh, for us, four zones, a lot more complicated than a term cut. Cut is another coverage that has no adjustments basically to it. You play it against everything and uh, it doesn't force people to get us into a, in a set deal versus a set, uh, 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 formation. Okay. Then the last thing is which intersects with mastery. Uh, we teach to a higher level than knowledge. When I learned education, when I became a teacher, there was a thing called Bloom's taxonomy of learning in terms of cognitive learning. And there's six levels of it. I know this is boring, but, 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 but it, the, 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 to teach to the third level, to go by knowledge, to go by comprehension and go to application. So when you teach football, they apply rules and facts and concepts. Not everything is just memorized and put in their head. That they, they teach at a higher level. Now, I've had safeties that I taught that I, they'd come off the sideline. And I said, they did this. We need to check this. And they said, I already did it last, in the last play when we were in there. They're, 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 they're all smarter than me. But they, they, they had a system down so you didn't have to cover everything rote learning. You can't coach football if guys have to memorize every, every situation. Uh, and so uh, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, some of the other things we do. And then uh, I talked about being uh, one heartbeat, uh, one, one voice, being on the same page. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, we do that through what's called the MAD manual, right? And, and again, I'll send you this. If, if you, uh, you, you'd honor me if you asked for it, just throw it away, but I'd be honored. Uh, if you had asked for it, but this covers everything. This is our Bible. This is our schedule. This is our delegation. This is our uh, philosophy statements, uh, organization, uh, all of fall camp, how practices work. It's all, it's all in here. And every year I, I you have to tweak it because of dates and so on. But uh, uh, every year I go through it and change some of the motivational statements. You can see some of them here on the, on the front page, and this was last fall's uh, the front page. These were our fall, our goals. You can see this is, is 1.004. This during the this during the summer had didn't have X on it. It had 23 to 21 because we in May we had lost the national championship. Right here it is. We lost the national championship <clears throat> uh, in the last play of the game, really, uh, to to uh, Sam Houston, and so. Uh, if you put an X there, you get this improvement, but we had this in terms of mentality. So just uh, reminding guys how fickle, fickle this program is. Uh, what is what does MAD stand for? MAD stands for make a difference. 
uh, that's a way of life for our guys. Again, we approach football in maybe, uh, maybe a little more ways than some, and, and we want to mentor our guys to, to be more than just student athletes and to go beyond. And so my brother years ago, with tears in his eyes, challenged me to, 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 to make a difference, and, and, and he marked me. And so it permeates our program. And, uh, and so the mad, hence the madman, you know, and there'll be, there'll be notes from players. There'll be motivational things on every page for the most part, just, just trying to make it entertaining, but, but make it business-like. Uh, we have a page on really saying how blessed we are to be in the United States, South Dakota, South Dakota State University. Uh, talk about the history of things. Uh, we sing the school song at the end of uh, every home game with the band. It's, it's really a cool deal. It's, 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 it doesn't sound good but because uh, of football players, but it's really a cool uh, deal to be part of that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we have some of the best facilities uh, in, in FCS football. We have an indoor, we have a brand new five-year-old stadium. We have this facility I'm in here that's a one-stop football shop. It wasn't like that in 2004, or five or six or seven, when we reclassified. And these are the guys that stepped across the line. Again, I said, I said we'd been in the playoffs one time in the history of SDSU football, Division II football. We went Division I, FCS. We had four years of reclassification. We didn't go to the playoffs 2008. We went 2009. We didn't go 2010 and 11. And then we've been to the playoffs um, 10 consecutive years. It's because these guys stepped across the line. And I want our guys to know that. You know, I've been here long enough that I can talk about the history. And I can talk about those three guys that are bold and that aren't with us anymore. That, that, that you know, you talk about last play, it, it also belongs to life, fits life, to live every day uh, like it's your last. And, and why not? Why not? These are the guys that built the SDSU football program that crossed the line and, and said, let's change it. Mission statement, vision statement, uh, boring stuff. But uh, we had to do that when we went to Division One. We had to uh, write those down for current associates. The 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 quote that's the, the thing in the Mad Manual that's talked about more than anything is burn the ships. And many of you heard the story of Cortez going to uh, conquer the Aztecs, and we got there to make sure none of his guys thought a second about it or turned back. He burned the bullets. He burned the ships. And it's it's a statement that says total commitment, totally in. And, uh, and so, you know, when you talk about the Mad Manual, which I go over every year, so some guys hear this five years, the same types of stuff with some different tweaks. Uh, this is the one that, they, they, that resonates with. Down there at the bottom are things that SDSU football is. And you can see how we've evolved. The bottom right-hand corner, at one point, we wanted to make the playoffs. At one point, that wasn't good enough. We needed to be a top eight seed and get a bye. And then we got the taste of the semifinals, which we've been in, I think for the last five years, uh, next thing we need to put down there is the ultimate goal. And uh, again, this, be a true freshman, and this is all new, be a, be a redshirt freshman, and yes, I remember him talking about that, and I, and I know this, and it's, it's part of me now. And, and all that stuff means something. Some of it's outdated, so it's in, in, in brackets, but it means something. Uh, our old stadium, our new stadium. So. Uh, I love this page. This talks about all the things that don't take talent that make you a better football player, make you a better person. And uh, again, this is in there on the left-hand side. It looks different in the Mad Manual. It's more of a, uh, um, a figure eight shape deal or an eyeglass type. I don't know what you call it. But every year I change the ones that are bolded based on, and maybe I'll keep some the same, but based on the last year. What, what do I want to emphasize? And our guys know that. And I, I, I think they kind of look forward to getting that page when we're going over this stuff during fall camp and seeing what Coach Stig is, uh, is uh, emphasizing this week or, or this year, I should say. All right? And, and really, if we do those things, uh, all the things that have talent, the, the 40 time, the height weight and all that stuff, we're a pretty good football team if we do all those things. And it's, it, it, takes, it takes a lot of work to do all those things. Uh, we talk about goals. You saw my goals for fall camp on the front page. I talk about the program being the seniors uh, program, uh, being at their, their team. And so they set the goals. You'll see the, those goals later on. 
uh, I think Stephen Covey's book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Successful, Successful People. And then this Don Morton thing down here at the bottom, I think is powerful. And uh, I'll just leave it at this. How many people really pursue their dreams in life? We want every one of our guys to do it. Uh, our guys have to serve, have to do three service projects every year to letter. So be an All-American, be a second round draft pick, uh, get go to combine, but you better go read at the elementary school. You better help with, with uh, uh, the bone marrow transplant registry. You better help coach FCA flag football for little people. On and on and on. Uh, give back. Uh, delegation of the coaches. I talked about uh, just do it. You know, do, do your job. You can see delegation. They're just an example. Obviously, different names, different duties. But an example of the organization of our. Mad Manual, I have a page for the support staff, the strength staff, all, all those people, the student coaches, the GAs, the quality control. Everybody knows what their job is and, uh, and can and just do it. I love this page. We have one rule in our program, make the correct decision. And I've been challenged on that uh, by what if they don't know what I think the correct decision is? And my answer is they better ask. Them, all right. Don't, 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 don't just guess. And, and so make the correct decision. That's one you would stand by. And it's the same thing for me and the same thing for coaches. And I'm not perfect, nor are our coaches, nor are our players. But I, it's easy for me to say when a young man comes into my office and we have to have a tough uh, discussion, discussion, it's easy for me to say, did you make the correct decision? And, uh, and, uh, and then we talk about it. It's a teaching moment. Be a time giver, not a time taker. All right? I ask you to turn in your books. I shouldn't have to say that again. All right? I tell you, you get your, your meeting with your advisor. Uh, uh, for, for registration. I shouldn't have to say that again. Leaving nothing to chance means I don't say it again. Every time I have to say it again, he's taking time from me or a director of football operations. Down there at the bottom, want to, uh, committed to. I, I hear want to all the time. And, and, and I say, I, I, I use it sometimes too. Everybody wants to be rich, right? Everybody wants to be in a championship program. Everybody wants this, that, or the other thing. It's natural, but there's no commitment to want. I'm committed to being the best football player I, I, I can be. What does that take? That takes some responsibility and allows me to say, did you do it? Elliptical, partially. Did you do it today? Uh, this one really is some, some college stuff, but uh, bottom left-hand corner, schooling your guys up on social media. I can't believe how negative social media is. I just... I'm not sure why I get on it. Maybe it's to, to get my blood pumping so I don't have to exercise some days, but uh, I just cannot believe how negative it is and how hurtful it can be. And how we're finding careers ended, ending because of that. Uh, so uh, it's important for me. I think it should be important for everybody. Expectations in the program, simple stuff, that really charges the players to be the leadership of the program initially. Uh, we talk about the awards we get. Now, this is, it, this is only part of the, bad manual but we have that in there so they see who did it last year they have an example as they watch these guys the next year of what it took to be the scout team player what the offensive player uh, was on and on and on uh and then we have uh, my faith my faith is 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 the most important thing to me. I, I coach the way i coach is is uh really based on uh, my faith and my uh i believe god put me in this situation I believe I'm blessed to, to, this was his plan for me, his dream for me, if you will. And so we have a section on, on, on being a better person and, and maybe maybe making that decision to, to uh, follow Christ. And this first one's about a guy that had, had three reps in his career. And it's a cool story. And then there's uh, Chuck Swindoll's attitude statement that if you don't have that laying around your, your, your uh, meeting, your program, I suggest you do. Talk about what it, what does it be to, what does it mean to get a, be a man? I got this from the head coach at, at Morningside. He had something like a winner's manual or something. Powerful stuff, powerful stuff. And, and we're dealing with guys that are men. We're dealing with guys that should be the example in their communities and their families of what it means to be the right kind of man. Uh, what is humility? Do we see that on TV? No, no. So teach you guys what it means to be a humble person, a person with humility. Uh, so this is the foundation, right? Uh, there's, a, there's an athlete's topical Bible written by Gordon Thiessen, and, and, and there's topics in there uh, about things you encounter as a student athlete, and there's a verse for each one, and I refer you guys to that. 
you know, if, if they're struggling in one of these areas. And, and I love, love for them when they come in and, and, and visit with me and, and, uh, and we can go there, if you will. Uh, you know, I went to the FCA breakfast at the national convention, head coach at uh, Indiana talk, strong, strong Christian. What he does is infinitely more than I do in terms of uh, trying to mentor his young men. And then we have literally a page on, 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 on making the decision and then some wisdom by John Wood. Uh, and this is really the foundation of our program in terms of hot buttons and so on. I'll finish up with this. Uh, the left-hand side there, that's all I talk about. That's all I talk about. And uh, the hot buttons for me are belief. I talked about that before. Leaving nothing to chance. Uh, championship character. And then family slash love. I talked about temperature. And, and, and just to show you a couple pages here. Uh, so there are the senior goals to reference the last year. That was the COVID spring. So you can see some unique goals there. And then the team first, part of the, what does that mean for SCSU football? And then what are some comments maybe or some, some quotes that reinforce that motivationally? And those will change every year. I will put new quotes in there every year. And so as you flip through this, excelling was on there, championship effort was on there. Uh, but what does it mean to be the best prepared, most intense? There's the 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 the, the championship character, and and uh, and this is this I, 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 the, the reinforces being treating them like individuals, and this is my favorite page, you know. And, and, and Jason Ani is a great example of being a part of the football family. A you know, long story about that, but again, uh, uh, it works for us. It's my twist. And, and, uh, and then we end with this, family or team first, team last, meaning, meaning team, team is, is all encompassing. And then if you see some of these quotes here, I, I survey the past players and ask them to send in a quote and I just keep adding to it uh, new quotes. So they see quotes from guys that played the era they played. And, and again, reinforcing this football family is a big, uh, big family. So, it's been a treat. Uh, I know I ran through some of the stuff at the end. I, I, I would love to share anything with you or get on the phone and talk to you about if, if anything uh, struck a chord with you. We'd love to have anybody visit. Uh, that's part of our mission. And, and, and I, love, uh, I love, I'm honored. I'm honored to be part uh, of this mission and this, uh, this clinic and, and, and can't wait to listen to some of the speakers, which, which I look forward to doing. So, Brian, are we good? Yeah, Coach, we're great. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to press stop here for the recording.